So a while back I made a study with me video. Um, I've seen a few of them before and it's got a image of the guy or gal studying and some background music. I know people like it, I like it myself, um, but I obviously didn't use my face, I just used a screen recording and I was basically just copying notes. And that seemed to rack up a fair few more views than I was expecting, given the size of my channel and how my other my other videos go. So I'm going to try it again, but this time I'm going to basically commentate over what I'm doing with my study. I guess this will be more relevant to those of you who are actually doing CPA, and more specifically CPA taxation, CPA Australia taxation. But it could also be relevant to I guess other people who aren't sure how to go about studying post tertiary education. So we'll see how this goes, hey. So what you're seeing on the left hand side of the screen is the first page of the Australia taxation book that we get from CPA. Obviously this is the digital version. And on the right is the index that I've started. Now those of you who do CPA will know how important your index is. So I might start with going over why my index looks like this. So once it's done, I'm going to filter it into alphabetical order. Now, when you go into the exam, the questions may ask something like, I don't know, um, when was the tax law administered by the ATO or who is the tax law administered by? Like, that's probably not a question they're going to ask, but just as an example i'll go have a look um, because i might not know that off the top of my head so what this note that's highlighted now is showing tax law administered by ato so i might have a look at that and be like oh so it's administered by the ato but if the ato isn't in one of the multiple choice examples well it all this tax law administered by someone or other is on page two so naturally i'll be able to go to page two and find out i guess who really does administer the tax law now it's important to note that the cpa exams aren't basically a list of oh what's this what's this so then you just make an index spend all your time doing an index and the job's done a lot of it is professional uh application professional judgment that's what i meant to say so for example a question might ask something related to the tax law environment now there's a little figure that you're seeing on screen right now that's highlighted because you've already been seeing it on screen and it just shows well the taxation law environment really they might an exam question might ask something related to if this is happening, then which court deals with it? And where would it go after that, given this outcome? Now, there's the book may have examples of this here and there, but you're not really going to find that during the exam because you're crunched for time. So this is where the professional judgment and the whole study part comes into it. Um, that's just an example. So I just wanted to clear that up just in case anyone who doesn't do CPA is watching or... If CPA itself is watching, in that case, hi. Um, no, I'm actually studying. I'm not just, I didn't find a way to cheat your exams. And also for those of you who might be starting out with CPA and you're starting out with Australia taxation, for example, or you're just trying to see how you study for CPA. Um, this is a good start as to what I'm doing, but you do need to do your own little well, study yourself. Um, and I've started with this because I can't actually do any of the knowledge equity seminars or lectures or anything yet because the semester hasn't started. So this is the best I've got. So just rapid fire with my little index here. Um, federal government power to raise taxes, including income tax, fringe benefits, and GST. So a question in the exam might be like, what powers does the federal government have or what taxes can the federal government mani manipulate that would be one of the easier questions that i'd get because i got the answer right there i'll just go into my index federal government dash 
O, power to raise taxes, that's them. Tax law administered by the ATO, so, I mean, I, and I said before that maybe the question will be a bit more complex than that, but maybe it might just be who administers the tax law. Easy mark. Tax law disputes are made by the ATO or the court system. So then that would be something I need to go back into my book to um, use some professional judgment there. Because obviously it's tax, you're not going to be expected to remember it. So thank God it's open book. Tax practitioners board, who they're made of. It's self-explanatory. Tax Practitioners Board Registration and Regulation of Tax Agents. How do they go about that? That's also on page two. Um, those two little notes right there might be redundant to some people, but for me, they kind of help in a pinch in the exam if I need a bit more specific, although I guess they're both on page two, but that's what I use for digital finance and it saved me. So I'm going to continue to use it here. It does use up a lot more time, but it's worth it because if you fail, it's going to use up even more time and money because this time I'll have to pay for it out of my own pocket and I won't get a reimbursement from work because work isn't going to pay for me to keep failing, which is fair enough. For environment figure 1.1, which is a figure we saw before. I'm not going to go through everything because I've already got five pages worth here. And I think this video has gone on for about five minutes at the moment. I don't know, I'm recording in split segments and I'll edit it later, but you know, I'm sure you don't want to sit here listening to me talk for 40 minutes about my index. Australian constitution gives federal government power to make laws regarding collecting income tax. So maybe a question might be like, can the federal government give power to collect, I don't know, fringe benefits tax I don't even think that's going to be a thing but maybe it's not income tax yeah that really isn't a thing oops point is question might be something like Australian Constitution can it give the federal government power to collect income tax well the answers on that page um, power to raise taxes in Australia page three well who has that power well the answers on page three uh, three arms of government which is right there but if i want more info it'll be in that little section there so we're on the second page of my index now and this highlighted one that you're seeing right now rules for amending the constitution so i basically got the answer right there just because i know i'm going to get questions related to that um i guess theoretical tax the theoretical tax side of things and if I have to flip through the book to find every single answer, I'm definitely going to run out of time. Now, this having all this info is really going to thicken up the index, but it's honestly quicker than flipping back through the book again. So, basically, I've got the answer for rules for amending the Constitution, and when the question asks something like Constitution Amendment Rules, I might look at Constitution first. And then if I can't find the answer there, I might start looking at rules because obviously the index is going to be in alphabetical order. And then I'll see rules from in the constitution. Oh, well, there's the answer. Thank God. So jumping further down a bit, you see I've got section 96 revenue power and revenue power section 96. So in the exam, I don't know which one's going to spring to my mind first. So that way I've got both of these standby in my notes you know obviously once again it's going to be in alphabetical order i don't know whether i'm going to start looking for 90 section 96 first in my notes or revenue power first so as you're seeing on screen now um, this is the section that relates to that revenue power section 96 um, this means the federal government collects the tax and then makes grants to the state and territory governments from of funds from income tax and gst to deliver services such as health and education. So essentially the bigger government can collect tax from everyone and then gives money to the littler governments, littler governments, the less big governments. And then they use that to pay for stuff like garbage collection, education in the state and that kind of stuff. 
So I guess right there, that can be an example of, I guess, professional judgment. I guess anyone who doesn't really know much about tax looking at this section might have no idea what that means. Obviously, I summarized it in the most layman's of all terms, using words like bigger and littler. So that's, yeah, just a little snippet of how I go about my study and how my notes will help me in the exam and with my study. This note here says, Commonwealth Government has the power to impose taxation, section 53, section 55, and section 114. So maybe a multi-choice question in the exam will say something like, which one of these sections does not relate to the Commonwealth Government's power to impose taxation? And they'll have the three aforementioned sections and maybe section 69 or section 420. Haha, <laughs> I'm so funny. And then obviously that will not be the answer. I'll still probably check it because I'm a little bit paranoid. But that might help get me an extra mark and in CPA every mark counts. And also if there's a multi-choice question related to the Commonwealth Government's power to impose taxation, how can section whatever or other be used in this way? Well, now I know where to start looking for, I guess, extra notes to solidify my rationale behind whatever I write in the um, text box. Here's another example of how professional judgment will probably be used. So this chunky little bit here, seven steps for a bill to become enacted as law. As you can see, I've been a bit thorough considering this is just meant to be a little index, like a little snippet of where I'm meant to start looking. Uh, basically, it gives all the steps for the seven bills to become enacted as a law. So, if, for example, in a question it relates to the first reading of the bill to become enacted as law, if I hear something like first reading, I'll assume it'll be for a bill to become enacted in law, although I imagine the question will be a bit more specific, but regardless, I have that little note in my index that this info is on page four, but I probably won't have time to be flipping back through. So as you can see, first reading, which is actually the second step, a bit confusing, but nonetheless, bill introduced to House of Representatives with a first reading, long title is read out, Copies of bill plus explanatory mem memoranda are given to members of parliament and made publicly available. Treasurer moves the bill to be read a second time. So yeah, as you can imagine this section here, um, obviously some somebody with no professional judgment will not be able to answer a question relating to this, but I know where to start looking in the book and I can use my professional judgment to whatever question they may ask Look, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but I think I just keep belaboring the same point here. These notes help me look back to the book in the section where I need to use my professional judgment to then answer the question so I can pass the exam, so I can get my CPA status, so I can make more money later on, and so I can put CPA in my LinkedIn profile, and I can be a big important accounting man. So yeah, that's just... Uh, I guess a little snippet of how I go about my study. Um, hopefully it's helped you if you were, uh, I guess, trying to figure out how to study for CPA and you were completely lost in where to start. Definitely try stacking your index. It definitely helps in the exam because Lord knows you're not going to remember 400 plus pages of content. And if you're anything like me, your brain functions at about 20% capacity in an exam anyway. So yeah, the index really helps. Anyway, that is all.